Okay, he is the animator and director behind Ghost Dogs, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in Tulsa, Oklahoma, as part of Circle Cinema's satellite screening. He's Joe Kappa. Welcome, Joe. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. And let's start off right there. Uh, what was it like? How did you get involved in the Sundance Film Festival? And then what was it like to, to see, your, uh, see your work on the big screen? Yeah, um, we finished Ghost Dogs like around August of last year and we premiered at Fantastic Fest, which was a big honor. It's a big genre film festival. And then we just didn't get into other film festivals that we were hoping to get into, a lot of like horror genre ones. So then we were feeling kind of deflated and we're like, uh, maybe we have to like retool this music, this stuff, this, this short film. And then we got a call from Sundance. They like called us directly. So that was amazing. Um, we thought it was like a scam at first. Uh, but then the email started coming in from Sundance. We're like, okay, this is legit. Okay, now we can start like bragging to people within the crew. Um, but they told us like mid November, we couldn't say anything until mid December. So that was just like, it was just so hard keeping in that information. Um, and then Sundance happened and you know, they've been like incredible. Sundance has been incredible with all their directors. Uh, you get like a cool gift package, which was really neat. Um, but they also just kind of like, held our hands through the entire process, you know, trying to get exposure, as much exposure as we could out of it this year. And really just trying to, uh, yeah, trying to get more eyes on our projects since Sundance couldn't happen in person. So the virtual thing actually worked kind of in our favor in that just more people were able to see the film. So um, yeah, I was able to go back to Tulsa. They did a in-person screening which a lot of projects didn't have that opportunity, but Tulsa was like really championing us. So Circle Cinema hooked up with Admiral Twin and we were able to see it at the drive-in. So I don't know, it was really cool to see. Probably my biggest accomplishment yet in my career and enjoy that with my family and like close friends that all came out. So it was truly a memorable experience. Yeah, bringing it all back to Tulsa where you're from, that's got to be a really memorable experience. I remember just seeing everything, going to something like this at the drive-in was very different. Everybody honking their horns after the, the showings and everything instead of clapping. There's just a lot of uh, unique factors that come into something like this. What was the yeah. uh, creative experience uh, or the creative process behind something like this? I knew that it was going to be a, a horror short, you know, based on the title and the description that I got as part of my handy packet, but there's really a... a a uniqueness to the animated style, the animation style, and the tone of this. There's some really funny moments in here. How did you come 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 about with this whole uh, this short film, and this, what was the process like of developing it? Yeah, so it was like I I, mean, I think it's like ten years ago. I had an art show at an old art gallery in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I hadn't done like art in years uh, leading up to that moment, and they asked for. <laughs> For an art show, so I kind of like taught myself watercolor painting. They're like really bad paintings, but I made these like dog characters with hands and legs, and I thought it was really funny. Um, and then and I got a, like a tablet to to uh, teach myself how to animate, to draw onto the computer, and do frame by frame animation. And the ghost dogs characters was the first thing I toyed with, and I, I thought it looked really funny. So I was like, okay, let's try to make a full on short, which I'd never done before. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, it was just a matter of teaching myself how to animate while making the movie, but I knew I wanted a, uh, kind of an old school look. Um, so cell animation, I tried to like borrow from influences from a show that used to be on MTV called Liquid Television. And, uh, that was kind of the texture, the aesthetic of the film. And, and yeah, as far as like the comedy and the horror i mean my style's always just kind of been creepy funny kind of like melding the two kind of like squishing those reactions from people into like one solid moment so people like feel horrified and laughing at the same time it's just a very i like movies like that uh i like the emotional somersault it gives people so that's what i try to do with my thing I liked the, that you were able to work that balance really well. I didn't, it's, it's kind of hard to do because they, they seem pretty opposite, be, having you really like on the edge of your seat, kind of uneasy feeling versus, you know, laughing and then having that kind of tonal shift. It, was, it worked out really well. And I, I kind of thought I had an idea of where the ending was going to go. I thought it was all going to take one direction. 
you know, everything was going to be, you know, you know, one way, but you took a very different direction. What was the, was there anything behind the, how you, did you have a vision about where you wanted it to end whenever you started the project or how did you work your way there? Yeah. I mean, coming up with the story, the actual story for ghost dogs was just a matter of storyboarding. So mm -hmm. I was just trying shot to shot to shot to shot. And that's how I kind of came up with everything. And then I was able to kind of revise it, rework it. But um, like that ending scene was part of a larger storyboard that I ended up drawing in the first round. And it was just getting way too long. So I had to shorten it. But that like that moment, the ending kind of happens about uh, like a third of the way through the thing that I had made previously. So it just, I don't know, it just worked. And when you're doing shot to shot to shot, I was just trying to make it like, what would be the most interesting thing to happen next? And that's kind of just how the jokes and the scary gags all worked. And I was just trying to be interesting. What's, what's kind of interesting about that is sometimes I've heard that, it, that you, sometimes you have this great script or in your case, a storyboard. And I, I think it was Aaron Sorkin who said, if you sometimes take a fin what you think is a finished work and then you just cut off the last little bit of it, sometimes you can have a very powerful ending, you know, or without even realizing that you were already there. And uh, I think that that kind of might, might be what you're talking about a little bit, because you had a lo longer storyboard, but the way it ends in this kind of like, oh, did that just happen? Wait, wait, wait a second, what? Kind of, it really worked in, in the case for your, for your film. So congratulations on that. Um, is there well, anything that you're working on that people should look out for in the future or where, where they should find you online to keep in touch with you? Um, I mean, I'm working on some cartoon stuff, but um, it's all in the works right now. So who knows if how people will see it and if people will see like part of a larger project. So I just have a lot of things going on and hopefully they lead to bigger, better things, including ghost dogs as well. That seemed to be kind of what happened here. You know, 10 years ago, you had an idea and look where, where, mm -hmm. where it landed you. Joe Cabot, yeah, exactly. thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you and I really look forward to following where you go in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sam.